So my name's Claire and I'm based here in New Zealand and work for ANZ UK Education. Um, we're going to spend, we'll be sort of done within the hour and just chat to you all about everything you need to know about teaching in Australia. Um, a little disclaimer, I'm not too great with this program, so if I'm doing anything wrong or, or any feedback, let me know. Um, we do want to keep this nice and casual, so please feel free to chuck your questions in as we go, and we'll sort of try and answer them um, on the way. Um, and yeah, any questions um, at the end, um, I'll be giving you all of my contact details as well, so we can sort of chat more about your own personal things um, after this at any time that suits you. So to jump into it, um, oh, this is a bit delayed, sorry. Um, there's going to be, there should be three of us on this call from ANZ UK. Um, we've got Lydia, who is just having a few technical difficulties at the moment. She's based in New South Wales and she specialises in permanent opportunities across New South Wales. So it will be great if she does manage to get on and join us. She's a wealth of knowledge in that area. Um, we've got myself. I'm a New Zealand trained primary teacher. Um, and I taught in New Zealand for three years before I went and taught in the UK. So that was that's my experience living and working in London. Um, and once I came back from there, I've been sort of working in global recruitment for educators ever since. And as I said, I'm based here in the Auckland office. Um, and then we've got Marissa, and I'll just hand you over to her to introduce herself. Hi, um, my name's Marissa. Um, so I joined through ANZ UK through our um, academy program. So hopefully I can answer up some questions about some of the other divisions as well. But um, at the moment, I am a recruitment coordinator in the temp schools team. So I look after quite a large area, um, pretty much like the right side of Melbourne from um, Port Melbourne down to the peninsula and Gippsland and things like that. Um, unless you're looking at a map, that probably sounds like gibberish to you, but it's a pretty large area. Um, and I look after both TAs and um, teachers, and I specialise in the special education space as well. So hopefully I can answer up any questions if you guys have any. Cool, thanks Marissa. And when Marissa says temp, that's uh, relief in New Zealand terms. So that's sort of her specialty there. Um, a little bit quickly about ANZ UK, who we are. Um, we're a global agency, so we're sort of a family who cover um, some really exciting locations. Um, obviously, we've got myself here in New Zealand. I support educators going to Australia and the UK. Um, and then we've got, oh, actually, I don't know how many offices we've got in Australia. We've got nearly 200 people working on the ground in Australia, and they are supporting educators within Australia. And we also have a team who are supporting Australian educators traveling further on. So Australians going to the UK, and Australians are really lucky um, on an Australian passport, you're able to also get a working visa for the U USA. So we have um, part of the global family is Scoot Education, and they've got quite a few offices um, on the Eastern Seaboard and the Western Seaboard now, so covering USA pretty well. Um, and then in New Zealand, we are all well, EP education is also part of our global family. You may have seen and heard of them before, um, and they will help you finding work, relieving and permanent work right across New Zealand. So EP education have offices in Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch. Um, and um, yeah, just sort of focusing on, on local work. So uh, we um, started the photo there is of our two founders. Um, so Dan Mundy was a teacher himself and went from Australia to work in the UK um, and, and um, Ben Goldsmith, but he's still based in the UK. So it's an amazing company with really good values um, and it's all about giving the educator an exceptional experience Experience. So, um, really focused on looking after the teacher. Um, so, ANZ UK, as I said, we, we will support um, everyone. We've got early childhood primary and secondary roles. Um, and as you saw it um, just before, we've got offices, you know, covering lots of global locations. But today we are going to focus 
on Australia. Um, so reasons to go and teach in Australia um, is one of the biggest ones at the moment is career opportunities. Um, it's a pretty tough market here in New Zealand at the moment. Um, I'm speaking to a lot of new grads who are struggling to find roles here in New Zealand. Um, obviously wanting to jump in to teaching and get their career underway, um, but finding it hard to get a role. So Australia, on the other hand, is really struggling to find enough educators. So um, it opens up your whole world of opportunities. Um, yeah, you're going to get plenty of uh, roles coming your way um, and it's an avenue for you to also get your teaching registration underway. So you, you're sort of jumping into it. So competitive salary as well, um, approximately 30% higher across the board. Um, so that's obviously a pretty attractive reason. Um, we've also got mutual recognition. So if you're a provisional or full registered teacher in New Zealand, um, then you have a really nice, easy avenue over to Australia. Um, and that system's really um, straightforward um, in most states. I'll talk to you, dive into that a little bit more shortly. Um, and obviously any overseas teaching experience on your CV is really valuable. It will strengthen your CV. Um, you know, any principal looking at a CV and someone's taught overseas is a great talking point. It's a standout as well. And everyone's really interested in hearing other educators' experiences of overseas curriculums. Um, so it just broadens your experience. So lots of really good reasons to go. That photo is the Great Ocean Road, which I have never been to and I'm dying to go. Um, my manager, Rowan, lives just along the road from there. And we have teaching roles that come up in that area. Um, I've got a bit of a poll and I'm not very good at this, but I'm going to try and jump it up. I just wanted to put this in now so that I could get an idea of what level you teach because um, then I can talk, know what to talk about. So um, poll must be closed to enable screen sharing. I think it must be underway. I can't quite see it. Um, Okay, it is underway. Great. So at this stage, oh wow, I actually got well, they, the 80% that voted. I've got 100% primary teachers on, oh, and from secondary. Okay, and no early childhood. So I won't go into early childhood at all on this one. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, so predominantly primary and a few secondary teachers on here. Um, hopefully you can still see my screen. Marissa, is my screen showing up all right? Yep. Oh, great. Cool. Um, okay, so this is obviously, um, you know, these are things we need to talk about now is um, what's going on in the world and things that we need to take into account. Um, so currently in Australia, most states is quarantine free. Um, entry into Australia if you're coming from New Zealand. Um, there are some states like WA that have got a hard border in place and it's really hard to gain entry. You need to apply and things like that. But if you're just flying into Victoria or New South Wales, um, you need to provide proof of a negative pre-departure test within three days of your departure. Um, you have to complete an Australian travel declaration at least three days before you go. Um, you obviously need to be fully vaccinated and you need proof of that. There's sort of, we can support you in all of this, of what you need. Um, and gen generally, in, well, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales, you need to have a rapid, rapid antigen test uh, within a day of your arrival, you need to self-isolate immediately in, um, at home or, in, you know, you don't have, there's no MIQ. And then you can stop self-isolating once you get a negative test result from that. For Victoria, you need to retest after six days again, um, but it's pretty, it's pretty good entering over there. So that's how it is as, currently as it stands. I have popped in the website, um, that's sort of a bit of a go-to. It's always been updated 
and that will give you state specific requirements for entering the country from Australia. Um, some places like Victoria, you can fly into Victoria and then you can travel interstate from there. Um, but yeah, you need to really, obviously all the states are quite separate and, and operate differently. So um, making the transition. So um, the right to work in Australia, if you're a New Zealand citizen, uh, you can turn up whenever you like. You have all the same rights in terms of working as any Australian citizen. So um, that's really straightforward. I'm not sure if we've got anyone on the webinar who has a, who doesn't have a New Zealand or Australian passport. Um, there are working holiday visa options that you can look into. Um, Canadian and Irish and British teachers, there is, um, they can access a working holiday visa, South Korea, Hong Kong. Um, if you aren't eligible for a working holiday visa um, and you don't have a New Zealand or Australian passport, then it's a little, it's a lot harder. So you really need to sort of, we would say to you, go and have a chat to a visa expert and try and secure a visa that way. Um, once you've got a visa yourself, then we can help you finding work in Australia. There are occasionally opportunities where schools will sponsor a teacher. Um, but you would need um, some really good experience here in New Zealand, and you'd probably need to, you'd need to be in one of the STEM subject areas and probably secondary um, or a very experienced primary teacher. Um, qualifications, because we have that mutual recognition with the teacher registration, um, if you're fully re if you're if you're able to be registered as a teacher here in New Zealand, you will be able to get in. Um, through that route in Australia. So that makes it a lot easier. I won't talk about the early childhood side of things. The Australian curriculum is very similar to New Zealand. Um, they operate um, starting at prep and move through to grade 12. So they don't have the year levels they, and they only go up to grade 12. Um, Marissa, jump in and correct me here if you need, but um, prep is, um, a bit like our reception um, and they stay in there a little bit longer. Not our reception, sorry, our new entrance. So they, they stick around a bit longer in that. Um, and then grade 12 is the final year of high school. Okay, so where we cover um, and what kind of work is available. So ANZ UK has an office, a couple of offices in Sydney and they offer metropolitan Sydney as well as regional New South, New South Wales right across the whole of the state um, and they will support early childhood, primary and secondary and they'll do CRT so that's another term for relief that's their casual relief teaching um, and they'll also do permanent employment so um, Sydney, New, New South Wales feel well covered um, we have an office in Brisbane and that's predominantly early childhood. So unfortunately, if you're a primary teacher and you really want to go to Queensland, it's really tough. Um, it's so competitive and highly sought after to work in Queensland um, where it's really tricky to get into. So if you're primary, um, you know, try and have an open mind and maybe sort of look towards more Victoria, New South Wales, or ACT. Um, we do offer secondary permanent roles though in Queensland, so um, we can target uh, specific roles for you there. And most of those roles are in independent Catholic schools as well. Um, um, Melbourne? Claire, sorry. Can you, can you hear me? I'm online now. Yeah, is that you, Lydia? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, it was lucky because I just I slipped in right at the start, but I didn't know if you could hear me or see me. So. <laughs> Oh, awesome! Uh, actually, I, I can't see um, I can't see myself or anybody, <laughs> so I'm not sure if anyone else can see you. But that's great. Um, I'll just take a moment and let you introduce yourself. Actually, Lizzie, you could you could jump in on the Sydney. I have got a New South Wales slide as well coming up, but if you just want to oh, introduce fabulous. yourself and who you yeah, are. Fabulous. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I um I was really glad that Claire actually asked me to come along because I've been 
on the hunt um, here in Sydney for some great teachers. Um, so my role specifically is on um, long-term and permanent contracts. Um, so we, we, we do have the, the temp team here that do the casual relief, but I basically focus on you know, semester long roles, 12 months and permanent roles. Um, I have had quite a bit of success placing, um, you know, really great primary teachers in permanent roles. If you're a gifted and talented primary teacher, if you're a math specialist, if you're a STEM primary teacher specialist, I work on those roles um, also. Um, but secondary science is um, the greatest need. I placed many, many, many science teachers in really wonderful independent and Catholic schools across Sydney, um, from the North Shore to the Eastern Suburbs all the way out West. Um, and I'm still looking for great science teachers and we also need TAS teachers. I'm not sure, Claire, um, if you have TAS in New Zealand as that name, but TAS basically is all of your applied sciences. So we're talking about work, metalwork, construction, food and textiles, so like sewing and, and cooking teachers in secondary schools, um, graphics, design and technology. So any of those subject areas, you are pretty much guaranteed to get whatever job you like, you can pretty much negotiate salary, um, you can walk into any job in any school here in Sydney if you are physics, chemistry, pretty much biology and then any of those TAS that I talked about. So we are really desperate for construction and timber teachers. Um, if you know anyone who is in carpentry and wants to make the move over as well to education. Um, but look, I have, I have had success in primary and I have a lot of success in, in secondary. Um, at the moment, there seems to be a big black hole of, of English teachers as well. The English consultant is trying to find English teachers um, and history teachers as well. So if you're secondary, Please, 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 um, if you can come to Sydney, <laughs> I would absolutely appreciate it. Um, you can fabulous, um, we can connect, and hopefully I can find you a job as well. Sorry, Claire, to take over. <laughs> no, that's awesome. It's good. It's nice for people to hear that there's a real demand over there, so that, that's great. <laughs> I'll let you, I'm, I've got another one I want you to talk on coming up soon, so as well. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, okay, so sorry. also... Uh, Canberra is a new office that's an ACT and at the moment just on early childhood so if you do know any early childhood teachers you'll see that early childhood features right across the board and it's a huge area of need over there as well so if you if you know anybody we've got a really good referral scheme um, you'll get paid a hundred dollars for any referees who come over and work so it's um it, that's a great area to be in as well we had an office in Perth, it's gone to sleep at the moment, but that should be picking up again soon as well. So we should be back in WA uh, quite soon. So um, I've got one more poll for you and I'm just gonna chuck it in. And it's just so that we can get an idea of where you are interested in, um, most interested in terms of location. Um, so this is sort of which state that you'd be interested in. Um, I really only put, um, the states that we can support you with at the moment. Um, so, okay, so we've got a majority, 60% um, mostly in, in Victoria, which is great, 30% for New South Wales, oh, it's changing, <laughs> and 13% in Queensland. Okay, great. No one for ACT, <laughs> Canberra doesn't appeal at the moment. Um, okay, cool, all right, that helps. Um, right, so jumping into Victoria, and I might get Marissa, you could break up my voice on this one, um, if you could, Marissa's sitting in Melbourne right at this point, so it'd be really good to hear from you, Marissa, around the opportunities that are there. Um, as Marissa said, she's taught right across all areas in the company, so she knows them really well. So is that okay if I hand over to you on this one, Marissa? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've got quite a bit of opportunities in um, Victoria as well, both in the early childhood and the schools division. So because we've got majority primary, I'll, I'll stick more to the school side of things. Um, but we have both um, a temp space or the relief space and we've got the permanent um, space as well. So um, in 
the casual relief side of things, we've got plenty of work available for both primary and secondary. Um, if you are a secondary PE teacher, you're an absolute unicorn and we will definitely have a work available for you. Um, and in the permanent space, um, we've got lots and lots of roles as well. So usually our, our permanent team does um, work with independent and Catholic schools, um, but they are at the moment working on um, a lot of government schools as well. And the great thing about our permanent team is that they do work by methods. So they've got um, consultants that look after after, um, uh, primary consultants that look after English and humanities, other ones that look after special education more so specifically. So it is very catered and you can have a chat to consultants and really liaise about what your plans are for the future. Um, but at the same time, in our temporary space, we've got lots and lots of work available as well. Um, and we do have something called an ambassador program. Um, so it's essentially kind of like a um, an agreement within um, it's like a makeshift contract really, where um, we would guarantee um, you a set amount of days where we do find you work. Um, and if we're not able to, we'll still pay you for the day. So it's um, it's a really good way to be able to explore your options in Victoria and get a whole range of different um, different experiences and different schools and ages, et cetera. But you still have that, um, that guarantee and that financial um, benefit as well. Um, yeah, I think that is it. <laughs> Um, uh, thanks so much, Marissa. I was just looking at the questions. Um, someone mentioned that they can't see the slides. Oh, the slides have disappeared. Okay, um, what have I done? Sorry about this. Um, oh, I know why. Um, because I haven't stopped my poll. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Uh, close. Closed. Is that better? Could someone just put a comment? Um, yeah, I can see it now. Oh, yay. <laughs> Apologies, and I've just also hunted down and found the questions as well. So I've just answered a couple of things there. Um, we might come to some of those questions at the end. Um, someone's asked, are you able to get jobs for us in private schools or more on state-based schools? Um, yep. So, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Is that for me? Okay. Um, in the permanent... Yeah, not me. <laughs> You're the one who know. <laughs> um, in the, if you're talking about more um, like permanent opportunities, our permanent team does usually work with like independent private schools um, and Catholic schools as well. So um, there is definitely work available in that space. Um, and then with our temporary team, we work with pretty much all settings. So both independent, um, Catholic, religious, um, government and special education. So yeah, lots and lots of opportunities. And Lydia, from a permanent perspective, if you're looking for a permanent role, are you finding it's mainly independent schools, Catholic schools? Uh, there's permanent roles across non-government and government um, sectors. So I do know that um, the, the temp team here, we work very closely together. I work with the temp team all the time. Um, there could be a teacher that comes across, wants to do some casual work in a department school, so a government school, um, and they end up doing a block with our team for a semester, a term, um, then, you know, they can pursue a permanent role if they like with the department. But in terms of permanent roles in the department, I don't deal with them specifically. I deal with mainly independent um, and Catholic schools, and there are plenty of permanent opportunities um, you know, a lot of the roles are advertised as 12 months, um, and then you know, if you're fabulous, they'll they'll just they'll just keep you on. So um, there are a lot of permanent roles in independent and Catholic schools, and there's also you know you can pursue your own permanent roles in departments as well. Um, there's some of the questions I'll leave to the end so that we'll, we sort of get through the webinar in the right time. Um, but there's one more relevant one just while from while we're on the slide. Someone's asked, is the demand, Marissa, in inner city Melbourne or would you need to travel to outer suburbs? Um, it's honestly, it's probably an even spread. Um, we, we need teachers everywhere, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so there's quite a bit of demand um, in the um, inner suburbs as well as, you know, the more, um, the outskirts, I guess, not necessarily um, the rural, but more, more so towards the outer um, suburbs. There's definitely work available as well, um, especially for teachers. Um, for teaching assistants, it's a little bit different, but yeah, I would say um, it's an, it, there's an equal amount of demand um, across all of Victoria. 
And we, we've got three physical offices in Melbourne itself. So yeah, pretty good. You know, you'll only be working through your local office in Melbourne and, and sort of keeping within that location. So that makes it really good. Um, okay, so New South Wales, um, Lydia, can I get you to jump in on this one? <laughs> Yeah, fabulous. So um, thanks, Claire. So um, we have, um, so my boss, Mitch, actually, he um, is our regional consultant. He is based out of home in Tamworth and he works on a lot of roles across Western New South Wales, so regional and rural um, community schools, a lot of beautiful Catholic schools. We work with um, the diocese like in Dubbo and Bathurst and we help them place teachers and principals in those areas as well. And that's primary and secondary, um, really great start to your career as, as a primary teacher in a permanent role. If that's how you wanted to start for a couple of years, there's a lot of incentives where they, you know, pay for moves or give you, um, you know, above award wages and things like that. So um, great way to start in Australia if you did want to set your foot in, especially for primary, um, and you've got that on your CV. And if you want, you can come across to Sydney um, and see how things go for you there. Um, so Mitch works on regional roles. I work on roles all across Sydney. So Sydney has a very large urban sprawl. If you have been here before, you would know we do have a great public transport system uh, that goes all the way out from Western Sydney up to the eastern suburbs, the north, the southwest. Um, but it would depend on your of you know your availability to commute. Um, if you did want to get your foot in the door as a primary teacher, especially. Um, you know, I would say definitely put the effort in for a year, do a commute for an hour um, each way if you need to, because it, it the, the dividends all pay off. And if you want to stay in Bondi, around there in the eastern suburbs, eventually we can help you find something out there as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's, you know, that's mainly for primary as form of my suggestion. But um, for permanent, uh, se permanent secondary roles, um, yeah, you would certainly have a lot to choose from, especially right now. And I think, um, Claire, I'm not sure if you're having the same problem in New Zealand, but basically the last two years of lockdowns and schools not having face-to-face -face learning has stopped a lot of um, new grad teachers from finishing their placements and finishing their ability to be able to graduate. So not only do we have a backlog of normally getting graduates for the last two years, we've really had not many graduates. Um, we've now got problems with teachers not getting vaccinated so they can't work. Um, and now we've got problems with casual teachers trying to fill in for those teachers that normally would be in a position who are vaccinated, but now we have no, no casual teachers to fill their spots anymore. So it's this huge chain reaction now here in Sydney. Um, so please come over and we will find you something somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you'll also notice we do do executive roles as well. So we'll place principals, senior school leaders. And it's um, someone else just asked a question before. It's not just for young teachers. Um, if you've got a New Zealand passport or got the right to work in Australia, um, schools love experienced teachers, really value it. So it's, it's for everybody. Yeah, um, we're actually in a position at the moment we're going to place um, a head of a junior school. Um, ahead of a primary school with um, a teacher who's been a principal in the UK for the last 16 years. So we do work on a lot of exec roles and we do use teachers from overseas. Um, so if you are, you know, ahead of science, if you're ahead of English, uh, we work on all of those sort of um, middle leadership department head roles all the way up to um, deputy principals and, um, and, and principals also, like I said. Um, awesome, thanks Lydia. So just some benefits of it, and remember CRT, that's casual relief teaching. So this is um, heading over and just doing some relieving. So it could be a bit of a scary um, thought, you know, go, heading over there without a job arranged, but it can be a really good way um, to get yourself set up over there, have a look around and get to know a lot of the schools. We do offer an ambassador program um, for select teachers um, and that's where we will guarantee you uh, your relieving so you know that no matter what every week you're getting x amount of dollars um, and you're you know you're going to be able to pay your rent um, and that sort of thing so you've got the security 
Um, but benefits of this is obviously you do get to know the schools in your area. Um, you'll be, you know what it's like here in New Zealand, um, the different cultures and different feels of a school when you sit in the staff room. Um, you'll get some schools that you really love and they'll like you and they'll keep asking for you back and you'll build up some really good relationships that way and that, like Lydia said earlier, can lead into a um, long-term role that way. Um, flexibility, obviously, um, we've got a really great app called Ready to Work and basically you just book yourself out on the days that you're not available. So you highlight in your calendar, I can't work on this Monday and I'm not, we can't work on that Friday. And then the consultants know that you're available the rest of the week. Normally we try and get you pre-booked work so you know where you're going. Um, and then obviously the lighter workload. So, um, you know, you need to be at school by 8.30. Um, and once you've finished the day, as long as you're not pushing the kids out of the door on your way out, rushing out the door, um, you know, um, you're done by half past three and that's it. You've got nothing to do, so no planning um, or anything like that. It can be quite a lonely job um, because you don't have the colleagues and you're not getting the relationships with the kids. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of big pros to it as well. So um, something to consider, and as you saw earlier, you can do... CRT or Temping um, in New South Wales and Victoria as well, primary and secondary. So, Anything else on that, Marissa, since you're sort of a Temp expert? <laughs> no, I think, you've, I think you've covered everything there. Okay, cool. Um, and then the permanent roles, and Ligia may have covered some of this already, um, but the typical process when applying is very consultative. So, um, it's, if you got in touch and said, I would really like a permanent role somewhere in um, Sydney and I teach this and this, um, then I will pass you on to Lydia and you'll get to know her really well and she'll get to know you really well and you'll develop a relationship before you've even arrived in Australia. Um, you may want to jump in on this from now, Lydia. <laughs> so, yeah, just getting to know what you are after and really trying to make that match right. Yeah, um, unfortunately I seem to have a problem where I start making friends with all the teachers and now I've got no time for everyone but um, I absolutely adore getting to know teachers. I, I was a secondary science teacher for 10 years myself so um, you know I, I've been there, I've been at those low points, I've been at the high points, I get it, I love talking about it and I love helping teachers stay in a great, a great school and a great job that will allow them to keep teaching and being the best they can. Um, obviously the fact that it's consultative means you know you will work with a consultant that's um, based in that subject area for secondary for example so you know I deal with primary and I deal with um, secondary science. Uh, we've got Sid who deals with secondary maths and TAS, so the technical applied sciences that I talked about before, you know, if you're a sewing teacher, cooking, um, you know, all of those sort of design and technology roles. And then we've got Damien who works on English and visual arts and drama. So we've got a team here that really um, can cater and understand your subject area. We need PE teachers as well. Um, so basically, if you're a teacher with a pulse and you can register to teach in New South Wales, um, I, I can I can believe that we can definitely work with you and, and, and helping you out in some form. Cool. So that's a big part of what we really try and do is just make sure that we're catering for what it is that you're looking for. Um, what have we got? And then we've got, as um, again, as Lizia mentioned earlier, uh, we do have specialists who, who cover the regional and rural areas. And it's not for everyone. I mean, you know, Sydney and Melbourne, pretty amazing. Uh, cities to, to base yourself but we do have teachers who are looking more for it's more important about the role um, and um, what's available and in Victoria um, particularly there's some really good financial incentives um, and I'll bring chat to you about that soon um, but you'll become part of the community so you get to know probably the whole town as soon as you arrive um, we have people going over with families and, you know, that's lifestyle, sort of basing yourself in one of those sorts of areas. So it really depends what your reasons are for heading over, um, but we can offer regional, rural, sort of in any of those states. Um, oh, so the, in Victoria, they have a targeted financial incentive. 
I've just sort of pasted an ad up here. I couldn't find the right thing, but um, this is government funded and the state of Victoria will offer an incentive. So if you work out of Melbourne, um, if you work sort of an hour, within an hour and a half out of Melbourne, um, they'll give you an incentive of $9,000, you know, on top of your salary for basing yourself out of the CBD. If you went further and lived sort of two hours out of Melbourne, so sort of two to three hours, somewhere like, um, you know, living in New Plymouth or something like that, out of if you were out of Auckland, um, then they'll give you $21,000 on top of your salary. And if you go quite far away, living somewhere perhaps like Thai Happy, um, then you will get an incentive of $50,000 on top of your salary. These are only two year contracts that you're taking on. Um, and we had a couple, a teaching couple, they will do this for new grads. So we had a husband and wife, she was experienced and he just graduated at the end of last year. And they both took roles um, in the same school. So on top of their higher salaries, which was about 30% higher than they would get here in New Zealand, they also got $100,000 incentive for being based regional Victoria. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting food for thought. Um, and as I said, if you're going with the family, um, that, that can be a really, really good option. So moving on to pay rates, um, and again, Marissa and um, Leisure, please jump in here if you, this is, the, the pay rates do vary by state. So um, that's why we've got these um, ranges here. Um, generally, I think the starting pay rate in Victoria is about 320, is that right, Marissa? Um, so the starting is, 335.70 um, plus okay. super on top. Yeah. Right. That's for primary and secondary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then do you know, Lizzie, what the daily rate is? You might not have that. Um, I'm not entirely sure the daily rate is. Um, I never worked as a casual teacher and I'm not sure what the teams say, but look, I would say it's at the it's at the upper end there, to be to be yeah. quite frank. Um I I've, think it is more than I've heard of teachers earning over over four hundred dollars a day, depending on where they are. Um, in terms of yeah. per year, it's it's certainly um, if you're a graduate teacher, you could walk into a job that could vary between at least uh, sixty seven thousand onwards. So we don't really have any. I think unless you're in Queensland, and I think Queensland the union there has really stepped up their pay as well. I don't really know anyone in Australia mm -hmm. who's earning fifty two. Um, no, sure. you know what? I've just realised, sorry Leticia, and I'm no, sorry everybody, fine. I've just realised what I've done is actually I've copied the pay rates from a New Zealand, a coming to teach in New Zealand webinar. So these right. are New Zealanders, everyone's going, oh. I was thinking they're quite low. Yeah, they're quite low. No, definitely. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> Some of the schools I work with pay above award. So I've got, I've had graduate teachers walk in their first year earning ninety-two thousand dollars a year as a base, mm -hmm. and they get ten percent super on top of that. So, um, look, I tell you, it's out there. It certainly does exist. Um, it depends on the school you go to, but I can say that there's schools that do pay top dollar for their teachers. Yeah. So I'm sorry, everybody. Please disregard this. <laughs> This is obviously what you are earning, could be earning here in New Zealand, and it, and is um, so it's, the starting rates are three three five up. Um, so it's you're starting at our up end, um, and yeah, I think the starting salary over there is seventy something. So it's much higher than what I've put here. I apologise. Um, after this, I will share the slides with you all, and I will make sure that I update this slide so it's got the correct um, ranges on there. Apologies. That's me doing things in a rush. Um, okay, so ANZUK, um, as I said, we sort of pride ourselves in offering an exceptional experience and around that, just um, finding you the right job, the right kind of work. Um, but also, a really, for me, I think what ANZUK do really well is the community, so the support around the educators. So if you're heading over to Melbourne, you will meet 
other educators from Canada and Ireland and, and Australian educators. There's a really good network there. There's lots of fun events, you know, that it's really about keeping the community together and, and you know, you'll, you'll meet friends for life um, going over there. Um, so there's heaps of things going on, um, trivia nights and pubs and things like that. Um, support from dedicated consultants, also what I think ANZ UK do really well is connecting you to the team in Australia from here before you go. So it makes your landing and arrival so much better, you know who's going to be looking after you, you know you've already got those relationships. So. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, potentially stepping stones from there, you may look um, to heading to the UK after teaching in Australia. If you head back to New Zealand, EP Education will be able to help you slip back into a role or finding you some relieving while you're sort of looking for something. Um, and if you stayed there long enough or you marry an Australian and you get an Australian passport, then we could certainly help you finding work in, across the states as well. So a real sort of, you know, great network there for you as well. Um, professional development, we um, offer at the moment, a lot of our events are online, um, but there's also things in the offices as well. We keep our blog really current and up to date. Um, and a lot of our information sessions are more sort of takeaways. So things, um, you know, uh, about specifics, so something about accommodation or resources or the Australian curriculum. So there's, we have shorter um, snippets um, and things like that. So really good professional development on offer. So the next steps, what happens, this is an older one, I've got um, Shannon's name in there, she used to be the New Zealand consultant. Um, and so I've, I've jumped in after Shannon. So. Um, what happens in the process is you'll have an initial chat with me um, and I'll find out about what you're after um, and then I will sort of direct you to the right person in Australia. Um, so if you say I really want to do daily work relieving and I want to go to Melbourne and um, then it's likely that you might get a call from Marissa and you'll have contact from her and you'll get to know her. Um, if you say I'm a science teacher and I'm going to Sydney, um, you'll get probably a call within one minute from Ligia and she'll be um, jumping in to introduce herself. So you'll have some ongoing in communication with the Australian consultant and, an, and an in, more of an in-depth interview so they really know about you and what you're comfortable to, in teaching and your, um, your preferences. Documentation. Um, you need a really good CV. So even though there's a lot of work over there, it's still you're still competing against people who are on the ground in Australia. Um, so you'd need a strong CV and we will support you around how to do one of those. You need good referees and they need to be current. So it's just something to think about now. Um, if you're a new grad, we're looking for your previous mentor, teacher, and if your principal, if they had much to do with you. Um, if you've been out teaching, we want the principal as your referee. Um, so um, we'll go into, we'll sort of provide guidance around that. Visas, um, obviously we don't need those. Um, and police checks come with the relevant state that you're registering with. Um, if you register with the Victorian Institute of Teaching, pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit painful. Um, it's like doing a big assignment, but um, you can have your, you can be fully registered with Victorian Institute of Teachers before you leave New Zealand. So it's all done. So you can land, you can touch base with your Australian, with your Melbourne consultant and your, your, um, your teaching. With Queen, uh, New South Wales, it's a little bit trickier. Um, you need to do some of that in person once you arrive um, into Australia. So that process with New South Wales can take a little bit longer um, and it's just something to be aware of, but we will guide you with all of that. Um, Skype interviews, um, obviously if Ligia gets you, or chats you about a school that you love the sound of, then she will hook that up for you and you'll interview directly with schools. Um, 
and then you'll have your induction into the Australian office and you're ready to start teaching really. So it's sort of a lot of it is done for you before you actually leave New Zealand. Um, I'm just sort of coming up to the last couple of slides with contact us. So I might just jump into the questions. Is there anything else you can add on to that, Lucia, Marissa? No. Um, so we've talked about that one. Uh, well, that someone's asked about a specific location. So um, I'll come back onto that one. Um, if we're coming over with family and it's a private school, do schools have discounts for the kids attending the school? Do you know that one, Lucia? Yes, I do, certainly. Um, yes, they do have discounts. I've worked with schools um, where teachers have sent their um, their child there and they can get something up to, and I've heard, 50% discount um, in some of these schools, which is great because um, some of the schools we do work with are quite prestigious and the fees can be quite steep, um, but they certainly do discounts um, for for the children of, of, of staff. So that's um, excellent. Yeah, great question. Cool, thank you. Um, Marissa, would you be able to, I'm not sure whether you can do this or not, but an estimate for a salary for a primary teacher with six years experience in VIC? <laughs> it might be a hard one, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, honestly, I don't, I'm not entirely sure, um, but with six years experience, you will be looking at quite an quite a high end, um, especially if you're going into like an independent or Catholic setting, um, you're probably looking at upwards of 80 to 90, um, probably more, um, all depends on your experience and that particular school as well. Um, but yeah, quite high. Great. And again, Marissa, um, someone's asked demand for a casual TA in Melbourne. Is there much casual. demand? Yeah, so um, in terms of teaching assistant work, it is usually in the special education space. Um, so if you're keen to go into, you know, special education schools and things like that, we've got plenty of work available. Um, we do have some shifts in mainstream as well, but it is mainly towards special education. So there are definitely shifts. It just, it's a little bit different to um, teaching where, um, you know, every school needs a teacher, but not every mainstream school needs a teaching assistant. So if you're keen on special education, there's definitely work available. Awesome, thank you. Um, and probably this is a, probably a leisure question. If you're finding us jobs, do we go through the interview process with the schools? Um, so we've sort of touched on that. And if we apply directly to a school on our own steam, is that usually successful or a, a chance of better by going through you? Um, I love these questions because, um, you know, it, you can apply for roles yourself and I and I'm really transparent and honest with my teachers if I don't have a real direct relationship with that school be it through the principal or the hiring managers on the panels and things like that I'll tell you I'll say hey I don't work with this school looks like a great role for you apply for it independently happy to support you still happy to help you with your CV happy to help you with them um, and coach you with interview preparation if you do get an interview yourself um, however I would say with the schools that we have a very close relationship with Quite often, people who apply independently don't often get a look in simply because um, we are able to provide that service to the school. They know that we've already screened the teachers. They know they're good quality teachers. We've done the reference checks for them. We've done a lot of the legwork. And so they trust us and they say, hey, Lidge, if you've got this great teacher, we want to see them. And um, other people often don't get um, the opportunity to interview. So I hope, I hope that answers um, that question. Um, the other thing I probably should say as well is um, when you go through an agency, it doesn't affect your pay rate. You will still get paid the same as you would um, as an Australian trained teacher at that level. So pay rates, your pay is your pay. So that won't affect it. Um, I think the other questions have been a bit more specific. Um, there's someone who is in Colic in Victoria. So I'll just ask you about that one at the end. Um, Marissa, if you know that location, um, oh, that's nice. Um, oh, that's really nice feed, feedback. Thank you, Robin. Um, you can sign up with us. What is what I'll do, and um, I'll just come to that one. Is the teaching culture diverse in Victoria? Oh, sorry, I'll just put this up for anyone who's interested now while we answer this one. If you'd like to stay in touch and you want to um, reach out, 
you can take a photo, put, get your camera app out and scan our QR code and you can put your details in there and we'll get in touch with you that way. Um, and I will also, as I said, send you out slides of this so that you can relive the magic of the recording of this um, webinar and you can sort of um, yeah, reflect, I will update the pay rates. Um, and then we'll just sort of keep in touch with you. Some people are two years out before they go and we just keep in regular contact and it means that you'll receive all of the updates. We send out a newsletter monthly and that's pretty much all. So yeah, it would be really good to stay in touch even if you are thinking two or three years down the track. Um, sorry, now there was a question and I've forgotten that was a Ligia one, I think. Oh, uh, sorry, Marissa. Is the teaching culture diverse in Victoria? Have I yeah, still definitely. Got on? Yep, yeah, oh, I'm still here. Yeah, no, it definitely is um, super diverse. I think Melbourne um, in, in general is a very diverse place. So you're going to meet a lot of different faces, a lot of different, um, you know, teachers, students, TAs, everything. So it is super, super diverse. And a lot of the schools do, um, you know, they've got a lot of programs for cultural diversity and everything. So yeah, I, I would say yes <laughs> to that. Awesome. Great. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm not sure if any of you have had a chance to take a photo of the QR code. I'm just going to go on to the next one, which is the rest of our contact details. So my email is there. Um, you can ring me. Um, and um, yeah, it would be really great to keep in touch. And thanks so much to Lydia and Marissa for joining us from on the ground in Australia. It, it really does add so much value having um, you know both of you on board so really appreciate it and um, some of you may end up sort of directly chatting you know to either of them in the future um, if there's no more questions how am I going oh I've, I've, we've whipped through it <laughs> we will leave you to your uh, Tuesday night and um, yeah we look forward to hearing from you in the future Thank you so much, Claire, and I hope that some of you great people choose Sydney. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> thanks again. Thanks so much for joining us. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks, Marissa.